Hey guys, this is Michael Movement Mastering. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use a Stream Deck to control your reference plugins within Reaper. So referencing is being able to flip back and forth between a master mix that you trust and what you're working on. So there are several plugins out there that are made specifically for that purpose. And I'm gonna show you how to control any of them to do just that. Because many of you probably are maybe referencing one track or dragging something in, or maybe even one of these plugins, but it's a laborious process. Sometimes when we're knee deep in something and we're gonna be really focused, it's, it's just enough friction to have to go open yet another plugin window, eat up some screen real estate, click around, have to close or go back to what we're doing. So I'm gonna show you how to make that frictionless by using a Stream Deck. You can apply these principles with other MIDI based device. How I'm gonna be doing it is using OSC commands through a third party software called Companion. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how to just set all that up step by step. Okay, so here's the gear you're gonna need. You're gonna need four things. You're gonna need your Stream Deck. You're gonna need Companion by BitFocus. You're gonna need Reaper. Uh, other DAWs are able to do this. I just don't have a lot of experience setting up OSC with them. So maybe I can add some more later, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in Reaper. Um, and then you're gonna need your reference plugin. Okay, so first thing you're going to need to do is configure your network settings because OSC is transferred over network in many cases. So you're gonna go here to settings and then to network. And then whatever adapter you're using or your Wi-Fi card, select it. I'm using a hard line over USB. And then you want to set a manual IP. So uh, because uh, you can use it in local host mode, which basically just references the computer. But I like using it across, across a LAN or local area network because you can just be more flexible with how you're sending the control messages. And so I'll get that to that later, but you're just going to remember your device's IP. So it's a manual. Uh, remember that. So mine is 192.168.0.10. And so we'll use that later on. Okay, so, uh, and the reason why you want it to be a manual IP instead of DHCP is because if you, you know, go to a coffee shop and come back, depending on your router settings, it could dish out a different IP to your computer when it hops back on the network than what it originally had. And that gets annoying. You have to go into Reaper, change settings, and match it to whatever you got dished out. So I would choose a static IP here. So that's all you need to do there for network. And then I would get a copy of Companion. So here's the Stream Deck website. Uh, so if you need to order one, uh, it's made by Elgato. So this is BitFocus's website. I'm logged in here. Uh, you just have to make a login so you can chat with support and do whatever, but you just make a free login and then download it. I've got it for Mac here. I'm on version 1.4. They do let you do the bleeding edge builds like the betas. I haven't done 2.0 yet since you know I just don't need to. And so when that's really stable, I might switch over to it. So that's Companion. So you're gonna download the Mac package, install it or Windows, and then you're gonna open the app. So what the app looks like is it runs here in your system tray. And as here, um, sorry, let me get that. Yeah, so it's running here. Um, and so it doesn't do much. And so you, uh, you can tell it's running, it's referencing my device's IP and the GUI interface, it'll ask you to select which network interface. So this is the same network interface you just set up. So if you're running your Wi-Fi card um, and your hardline at the same time, just pick the, the hardline I would advise or just whichever one you wanna use. And then I would stick, it's the default is uh, port 8000, I would keep it there. And so I would change it um, and then it'll say running once it's like cool. And then you can hide it and have it running in the background. If it close, it'll like stop the software. It's not like a closed window, so I would hide. Uh, but first you're gonna wanna launch the GUI. GUI. So uh, it runs best in Chrome, I'll say that. So make sure and get Chrome. Um, and so, which is just great to begin with. Okay, so here is what the GUI looks like. So it's um, it's controlling the plugin, but just doing it from within uh, Chrome. So you want to make sure that your Stream Deck is detected. So I've got mine plugged in. So you're gonna go over here to Surfaces, and then I, you can see it here. Uh, it shows that's seeing an Elgato Stream Deck. So you can do other cool things if you don't have a Stream Deck with Companion, which is awesome, and I'll show you that later. But if you don't see it, you're just gonna hit this rescan USB button and it'll look for it. So you could have like four Stream Decks here, all doing different things, which is awesome. So if you wanna get really fancy, you can add more later. 
Um, so then what we're going to do is create an instance. Um, so I have several instances for it to controlling different devices, but I'm going to delete the one I made during, while I was testing this and let's add a new one. So you're going to do add by category and you're going to go up here to generic and then generic OSC. So OSC is open sound control and uh, it, you know, controls sound devices and other things as well. But uh, we're just going to call this companion OSC for Reaper. Why not? And the target IP is going to be the same IP address uh, that you just used, uh, that's with your network peripheral. So mine's 192.168.0.10, and the target port, 8,000, apply changes, and boom, we've created an instance. So uh, an instance is basically a device, and then we can set up particular controls or attach to a device and then send those messages out. So that's what, what it is. So I'm going back to instances now, and you'll just have one listed here, but at the bottom, it says what the module it's using is just generic OC commands. This is the name I just gave it. This is saying, hey, it's cool. And then we can always edit it. You know, if you forgot to turn on static IP settings, you got a new IP address, you would just click edit and go um, change the IP settings there. Okay, so we have our instance, and that means now we can go over to our buttons tab, and it'll land you on page one to start with. I've already got mine set up for my fancy controller. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to go to an open page, so that's page five for me. And now I would just hit my stream deck and be able to arrow up there. And so we're going to click on an empty slot, and this is where we're going to do our first command to have the AB going. So this is to be able to make the plugin uh, go back and forth, which I'll show you in just a minute. So we're going to first set the button style and do text because it starts blank. I want to be able to find it. So I'm just going to label this AB. And then we're going to choose your, yeah. So we're going to go down to key down on actions. Basically when we press it, what's going to happen. We're going to go scroll down. All right, name this companion OSC for Reaper so we could find it. And you're going to want to send float. So that is a floating point message. If you are in programmer person, you know what this means, but basically a floating point where you're able to have a decimal point attached to it. So most of the plugins that we're gonna be dealing with are gonna to wanna to receive a floating point value to determine the parameter for what's going on. So most of this is gonna be float. I guess all the plugins that I use OSC for want float. So anyway, so that is determining the type of message we're sending from this instance into Reaper. And now we're going to change the OSC path. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger now. So the OSC path, what that is, is almost kind of like a web address. So it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter. I could literally type any letters or like normal characters in here. It's going to be happy. But I like doing uh, forward slash the plugin name and then forward slash the parameter I'm changing. So I'm going to, the reference plugin I like is metric AB. So I'll do metric AB slash. And what am I changing? The AB switch. I'm just going to put in AB. Right, and I'm going to leave this value at one. It's technically going to put it at one point and a bunch of zeros since it's a floating point value, but it'll uh, interpolate that for me. So, and then we're going to do key up off actions. So I'm making this a latching A B switch. So when I press it, it goes to B, and when it's off, it's on A. So I'm going to go send float, and I'm going to do the opposite value now, but the same OSC path because I'm talking to the same parameter. So metric A B slash AB. So then I'll go here, very important, hit the latch toggle button. So that means that turns this into one that toggles, which is awesome. So I'm going to press it here. You're going to see feedback here on the button. When I press it, it says, hey, this gives me a report of what's happening. And then you see the yellow means it's engaged. So I've toggled it on, toggled it on, or off, toggled it on, and now off, which is great. So I know that the button itself is working. Cool, so that's all done. So now I'm gonna pop back over to Reaper. So I just have a single track loaded up here uh, and then empty uh, slot. So I'm going to now go to Reaper preferences, scroll all the way down to control OSC slash web. So this is my normal setup. I'm just gonna add another. So control surface mode, you're gonna choose OSC. Device name, let's just say companion 
Reaper, so it's similar. The mode, you're gonna do local port. It's listing on port 8000 and the local IP. So I already filled that in. It might not fill it in for you. And so you're gonna hit listen and then you're gonna punch that button you just made, the AB button. And hey, boom, it's showing us the data. So it's saying slash metric AB slash AB, but we just typed in the path and it's doing the brackets for the F because that's floating point value and it's showing us those values, which is awesome. So that means this is engaged and working. And then the next command, you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is checked. Allow binding messages to Reaper actions and effects learn. So that means Reaper is allowing the incoming OSC messages to control uh, plugins and other things within Reaper, even some of the native stuff from Reaper, which is awesome. Okay, so I think that's there. Now let's go ahead and insert our uh, reference plugin. So I'm gonna go here. I've got it here. I got adapt, adapter audios metric AB. I think I'm saying that right. And it's empty now. I want to load a audio file. Just thinking about it. I'm just go ahead, drop this in, this track that won't, you know, I'm allowed to play it somewhere and not have to pay someone money. Thanks, YouTube. So loop this section. I'm going to turn it way down. Okay, so that's just so we can demonstrate flipping back and forth. And now all I'm going to do is go here to parameter, effects parameter, effects parameter list, learn, and then your reference plugin, depending on what you're using, is just going to give you a different set of things you can control. I know in the reference by um, Mastering the Mix, it only has two things you can change. Last time I checked, and that's the AB switch and then what track, which are the two things we're going to learn how to control. So I'm going to go here to AB switch. And then here it's going to want a MIDI message or OSC. So you can do this with like, you know, a little Korg Nano controller or whatever little MIDI controller you have. You can have a knob that can sweep through your tracks, which is cool, or just a button that toggles for off on. But again, this is about a stream deck, so we're gonna keep moving forward with that. So now I'm gonna hit AB and it has learned it. So no, that has these checks boxes of like, when I only have the plugin window up, should it listen to the command? I like all these unchecked so I can have it hidden. I don't have to select it. I just hit the button and it does its job. So right now, the metric AB uh, is this OSC command I'm triggering from my stream deck over companion to sending it into Reaper. Now I'm using Reaper to map that command to this specific plugin. So I'm hitting OK, and it works. So we can see here now the AB, the blue button means it's on A, and orange means it's on B. And then I can confirm that in companion that I'm hitting back and forth. That's what's going on. Another neat feature in Companion is, let's say you lost your stream deck, but you want to do some changes or you just don't have one, you can just go here and hit Shift and test stuff, and it'll go back and forth, which is super neat. Okay, so now I've mapped my A, B button. So now, like my earlier uh, example, what if you wanted to have nine different slots we can trigger? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go back to our page five. I'm going to hit Move, move this guy over here. I'm going to copy it, put it right here. I'm going to hit unlatch because I don't want to be a latching button anymore. I just want it to be uh, its own thing. And I'm going to delete this key up off. I'm going to rename it one. So I just want track one to be triggered. So then now I want my OSC path to be similar. It's going to be slash metric AB, just to keep it organized. But now instead of it being AB, I want to trigger the track select. So I'm going to just do track select. And the value, I'm going to put zero because uh, most plugins, like their least most or left most rotation or whatever, uh, is going to be zero. And the biggest value that parameter can go is usually going to be one. So if the track one, um, out of 20 uh, is going to start with zero and then gradually scale up to 20 uh, specifically with this plugin. If you have, you know, I used to use Sample Magic's Magic AB and it was only nine slots, so I had to scale that accordingly. So I'm going to show you, make sure this works. And I'm going to show you another spreadsheet that I made that's going to make this easier for you to figure out. So now let's go to Reaper. Now we're going to go to Parameters, Effects Parameter List learn and this is selected track is the parameter it wants to get data from to change the selected track so now i'm gonna it now it's remembered that or it has now accepted that i'm gonna hit okay so i'm gonna select this slot hit my number one and boom now I went back 
here. So it's like the slot here, number one. Okay, so now what we need to do is go back to buttons and basically copy this around and just change the value between zero and one to have it correspond and make the plugin pull up a specific slot we want. So that's kind of hard to figure out or you just kind of have to guess at a value and see which one it pulls up. But I've made a handy dandy calculator for you. And so basically you can say, how many reference slots do you have in the plugin? So this is, or I think I misspoke earlier, Met metric AB has 16, uh, reference has 20. So if I was using that plugin, I hit 20, and this would give you all 20 values you need to put in for this slot. So let's just put 16 so I can keep going with metric AB. So I've already put in zero for uh, metric AB. Now I'm gonna go to two, I'm gonna copy that value I'm gonna go back to companion. I'm going to copy this button here, change the button text to two, keep the same OSC path. I'm just gonna change the value now, paste in this value and go back to buttons, go back to Reaper. And now I have the first slot selected. Now I'm gonna hit the button two. Now my second slot is selected. So I'm gonna do this one more time just so you're getting the hang of it. So copy two to three button text three, go back to my spreadsheet, the slot number one, two, three, copy this float value, and then put that here, go back to Reaper and confirm it. So one, two, three, and then let's say you don't have a stream deck, you could always test that by going here, shift one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna look at my notes real quick to see if I missed anything, oh yeah, here we go. So for those of you, again, who don't have a Stream Deck, you can use Companion, have this running in the background. Again, on the surfaces, it can look for your Stream Deck, but it doesn't have to have it. But you can do this thing called the emulator. And that is going to pop up these pages. You can have this running as a separate page and click around and it'll do it. So I'm gonna break this off here, put it in Reaper and I can see how each of these slots are changing just by using the web emulator. So what that means, and again, this is why I advocate that you use um, not the local hosts, but the LAN settings, is that I've got, let me switch this over here. Whoop, sorry folks. I've got an iPad here with my settings and now I'm able to scroll down to that page we just made. So this is, you know, the one, two, three, then AB was updating on the fly, and now I'm tapping around here. So again, if you've already got an iPad or iPhone or anything that can has access to the internet, you can use its screen. So again, I'm saving 150 bucks, I can use something I already got. Or this is handy if you wanna get really nerdy, if like it can trigger other things. So I have a template Oh, sorry, I, I had the camera on, I didn't show you. So anyway, I'm tapping one, two, three on the iPad. It's going here um, and switching what's going on. So I can have any device uh, on the network and be able to change that, which is super cool. Um, and then one more thing, after you do all this work of being able to make your slots and have these values here, you can import and export. So I would export the full configuration and basically it just saves everything as a config file that can be uploaded. And then let's say, you know, your computer crashes, we have this in the cloud, you can put this and it loads everything back up and it's all there. So you don't have to redo it all, which is super cool. And so I will have a link to a file of my companion uh, setup for my stream deck. So you can get some other ideas for what's going on. This is my homepage. I also use Ian Shepard's perception plugin and I have the bypass function there. I have one button that tells oh, uh, Reaper to pull up a bunch of different meters and then it hides them all, which is another thing you can do. Uh, but yeah, so below I have a link to this spreadsheet and then I'll also have a link to the reference tracks that I like to have loaded uh, within my metric AB plugin because I have a preset here so yeah, I got them all here with these files. So I don't have the files included, but I have a Spotify playlist that gives you all of those. And then I also have at movementmastering.com slash reference, I have 10 of my favorite reference tracks and a bunch of bullet points explaining what I listen for in each of those tracks as I reference. I think it'd be a really handy resource. 
Okay, so that was a lot of nerdy stuff. We talked through how to set up your network settings, connect your Stream Deck, get it talking with Reaper, and controlling your plugins. I think this is going to be a huge free workflow and get you moving quickly. And you can uh, send me a comment below, leave me any questions, and make sure to look th for those other resources below, that spreadsheet, the Spotify playlist, and those reference, uh, that PDF that has all the reference tracks. I'm Michael with Movement Mastering. Thanks for watching.